Uh, welcome to this new video and in this video we want to do a test, a camera comparison between the Xperia 1 Mark III against the iPhone 13 Pro. So both flagship fight against in terms of cameras, videos, photos, selfies and more. So let's get started. So let's talk specs first. Both of those devices come with a triple lens setup with uh, true free 12 megapixel shooters, but there's some difference because the Sony has a periscope zoom here that has two photo lengths. So you can switch between uh, 77 and 105 millimeter, which is pretty awesome. And the iPhone only has uh, three times the zoom, which is like uh, the uh, 70 millimeter type of zoom the iPhone 13 Pro so I will show you all the specs of those two camera systems um, as people might forget them or might not know them so triple lens setup 12 megapixels the aperture aperture sizes are almost the same Sony has all Sony sensors on the back as well as Apple that uses also all Sony sensors here and interestingly enough Apple is not jumping on the bandwagon of uh, high megapixel to bend down and the same with Sony so Sony has fast readout speeds probably faster than on the iPhone because it has developed extra sensors for fast readout the main camera sensor especially that can do 20 frames per second in autofocus and auto exposure and then the other tools who can also do now with Xperia 1 Mark 1 Mark 3 3 can do a lot of fast action shots as well so uh, this is uh, everything now for this uh, specs list you will see here and uh, yeah let's start with the videos we start out with the weakest sensor on the sony the front facing camera 8 megapixels only and in video mode only 1080p 30 frames per second there's no 60 frames per second option can you believe it and also no 4k option on this weak sensor so for sure the iphone will be better here also i think in stabilization the sony can improve a little bit but it might be also due to the 21 by 9 aspect ratio and i'm holding it with one hand here and uh, it's on the other side the far other side so bumps are a lot more exaggerated than on a smaller phone and now the front facing camera of the iphone and to make it fair and square i only put it up to 4k but 30 frames per second you can also go up to 60 frames per second on the iphone if you want to and you also have the option to do 24 frames per second at least in 4k which is pretty nice i could have like also went down to 1080p 30 frames per second to do a comparison but it is clear here that the iphone should be the winner on the front facing camera now ultra wide angle on the sony xperia 1 mark 3 and this is what you can do with the ultra wide angle the ultra wide angle just like on the iphone has autofocus but uh, yeah it doesn't have close focus distance so if i want to like for example go up on here and show you this up very 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 close you can see it is losing its uh, focus ability uh, there maybe like this so I don't have very close uh, focusing distance with the uh, ultra wide angle of the Xperia 1 Mark III but on the iPhone I can do this I will show it to you uh, right now so now the ultra wide angle footage also 1080 60 frames per second on the iPhone this time around and the cool thing is it has also autofocus and if I can find the right thing here again I can show you how far in i can go with it being able to acquire focus here so you can see uh, it's also struggling a bit but here the quiet focus so you can see that the iphone has this macro capability on the ultra wide angle and i think the wide angle is also pretty nice and stabilization in colors and hdr should work also pretty nice what do you think uh, write it down in the comment section and we will try out the main cameras right now to see if there's any big difference and advantage of the iphone there in terms of video full hd 60 only i could go also for k30 because the sony in its default camera application can only do 4k 30. 
So now the main lens of the Xperia 1 Mark III and I like to do this uh, anyway the main lens of the Xperia 1 Mark III how about stabilization how about colors background blur and uh, yeah what about uh, close focusing distance? Nee. What about uh, the uh, 1080p 60 frames per second video? Do you like this on the Xperia 1 Mark III? I know Cinema Pro you can go 4K in 60 frames per second, but who wants to use Cinema Pro with its shaky stabilization and non auto exposure and all this color grading that you has to have to do uh, later on? It's like a bit of disturbing. So here the Xperia 1 Mark III. Uh, 1080p 60 frames per second um, yeah should be good enough I would say and uh, now the main camera sensor on the iPhone 13 Pro I cannot do any fancy fancy uh, finger showing you the 13 Pro it's just like magic probably this is what would be the thing that Apple would say on its stage anyway how about stabilization how about colors how about background blur especially HDR I think in HDR the sky might be not blown out so much on the iPhone than on the um, Sony because Sony doesn't use any HDR in video you have to enable it and then color correct it later on in post anyway what do you think about the stabilization colors background blur uh, of the iPhone 13 Pro's main camera sensor how about stabilization and uh, the rest of it um, yeah, write it down in the comment section. Here are the photos. On the left we have always the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III and on the right we have always the iPhone 13 Pro. So on first glance we can see, wow, the iPhone 13 Pro made the sky really blue and we can see a lot more details in the iPhone 13 Pro's image here on the left it looks a little bit like dynamic range is lacking on the sony and the details are lacking but when we come to who took the most realistic photo i have to give it to the sony here because the blue in the sky here was definitely not like this it looks like daylight on the iphone 13 pro but actually it was like yeah sunset it was going down the sun was going down so it was this more red light and this more red kind of feeling here and the same goes then for the overall color of this image so on the left we have a more red tone here also on the ground as you can see and a way more greenish and bluish tone on the iphone when it comes to details here you can see it's basically the same both 12 megapixel sensors there's maybe a slight uh, difference in terms of field of view a bit but that is basically everything when we take a look at the um, at the house here in the background you can see it is a bit of overblown here especially on this window on the sony and here it is better so sony has i think a problem with dynamic range handling and the iPhone does this better in this case uh, when it comes to other colors like the blue here I think they're almost identical but like I said we have some kind of uh, issue on the iPhone with the color here it did not get the correct colors it did make a more pleasant image definitely but the colors are not correct so if you want to capture reality then you are better off with the Sony at least on this photo we can take a further look when we take a look at the zoom shots we have a 2.9 zoom optically on the Sony on the left and a 3.0 zoom optically on the iPhone 13 Pro what we can see here clearly is first of all we have a little bit of lighter exposure here on the Sony and a bit of more darker and more contrasty look on the iPhone and it's way more contrast the interesting thing is that here in the top left corner you can see it here the Sun was shining as you saw in the previous photo eventually from the right and this is the right side here and what we can see here is then we get like this a little bit of casting so if I zoom in here for example maybe you don't see it here but when I zoom in here as well you can see in terms of sharpness the iPhone is not really sharper but because it adds more contrast and has more sharpening applied it appears a little bit more sharp just take a look at the background here where you can see the tree and the leaves 
you can see more contrast and you can see also the sharpening applied to the edges and when we scroll down here we can see also at this flower bouquet here and the text and the fence here that we have here this glow that comes from the sun that's completely eliminated here on the iPhone which is nice so the iPhone one looks a bit sharper as well and looks a bit more yeah, contrasty as well and probably easier to read but when it comes to realistic colors and yeah the realistic uh, view of this stone and the, the age of the stone then you can see here this doesn't look really good on the iPhone it looks a bit artificial too artificial it looks like coming from a smartphone and on the left this looks like coming from maybe a small sensor size camera so this is the basic uh, difference that you can see and that you will see in all of the photos more or less then we tr i tried out of course uh oops didn't try it out on the iphone but i tried out the 4.4 times zoom that the sony xperia 1 mark 3 also has and here you can see even more this glow that comes from the sun and this is uh, shining now try to catch it uh, even better to see if it gets any sharper any more details here and i have to say this is one of the weaknesses of the sony the 4.4 times zoom lens here doesn't appear to be as sharp it just appeared to be have some haze which is a bit weird because the same camera setup is used on the xperia 5 mark 3 for example but doesn't produce this like kind of haziness here so i wonder if they made a mistake somewhere in the hardware and using revision 2 on the xperia 5 mark 3 or they can somehow fix this in post uh, maybe later on but when we take a look at those two you don't get more details with the 4.4 times uh, zoom um, maybe slightly here in the uh, flowers but you can also see that noise is creeping in here a little bit and uh, yeah the colors might be more accurate there's no over sharpening going on which is pretty nice and i like the sony one i have to say and it's like too artificial for the iphone side of things when it comes to close focusing distance the iphone on the right has a nice little yeah ultra wide angle that can do macroscopic photos so i can go very close to this little i don't know what it is hazelnut is it's not it's just this little uh, kind of flower uh, growing on a tree and yeah if i zoom in of course it looks a bit like an oil painting uh, you don't see much of the details here i'm a bit further away here with the main camera sensor on the Xperia 1 Mark III because the ultra wide angle doesn't have this macro capability but the main camera sensor can get pretty close not as close as with the iPhone but I can crop in and have yeah I think the better photo because I'm a bit zoomed in we can try to uh, maybe zoom out a little bit and see which one has a better photo roughly the same uh, kind of uh, kind of field of view may be better for 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 this comparison i would say uh, let's go to the next photo where i have a close-up where i wanted to check out how is bokeh is there any difference what we can see here bokeh is a bit more pronounced on the uh, iphone 13 pro so it has a bit of more natural background bokeh if i go close to something you can see a bit of fringing here definitely as you can see and also here a bit i would say but the bokeh looks nicer more uh, pronounced than here here less of the fringing as you can see here the fringing like around this here is very obvious and here we don't have this i think it's called fringing you can correct me if i'm wrong because here also the lantern for example i don't or is the hdr effect kicking in here it looks a bit weird on the iphone if you zoom in at this level who is doing this usually you have this and then if you have that on a smartphone you can see even like the angle is slightly off here it would look a bit different but you can see here this is more in focus than this this is more out of focus definitely so uh, in terms of colors here this yellow thing this looks like old painting and it's rusting it's uh, getting apart here here what you can see is almost the same color maybe a bit brighter or again we have this over sharpening going on here which makes yeah it doesn't make 
the image look better in any way it looks more i'm, I'm shocked i have to say that uh, there's so much editing going on on the iphone and but every time i'm comparing the the um sony xperia with another smartphone i see so much of this processing going on but it's not always good as you see here and the next one you can see also a very interesting thing i'm not sure what's going on there uh, you can see the opposite of we, what we saw in the first picture where we had like the bluish more bluish sky on the iphone here it for some reason makes everything yellow and even the grass is a bit like yellowish instead of green i have to say no the sun is coming from this direction yes but i'm in the shadow and this means no the sky did not look as yellowish as it looks here it looks more bluish it doesn't look maybe as bluish as it was looking here we go to the here to the right you can see there is a bit of yellowish going on here uh, but yeah the iphone made the whole sky a bit yellowish the whole picture a bit yellowish this building it's yellowish it's a bit greenish even and here it is white like it should be the same you can see here uh, the the roof tiles here also bluish color here more greenish yellowish color the more realistic one is definitely the one on the left because it was there and uh, yeah, i can tell you just simply in terms of details do we see any detail level difference here a bit of brighter exposure i think here on the iphone a bit of darker here but uh, detail level i don't see much of a difference i have to say in terms of hdr both did a good job i would say maybe you can see here a bit more of the clouds on the iphone a bit less on the xperia both a nice photo but i think i prefer the one on the left because it's more realistic because it was there and i wanted to capture this moment and this looked um, yeah more realistic uh, then i also took a super wide angle shot i missed that one on the iphone i was searching for it but didn't find it just like for goodness sake you can see that everyone is praising the iphone having like uh, one camera sensor and the other sensor very close in terms of colors if i switch from one to another you can see that it is not as perfect maybe as on the iphone but it is also pretty good so in general the color does not change so much and you can see it's more yellowish here in this shot as well which is interesting so maybe it is some kind of algorithm going on that the um, iphone took here in as well and yeah the sony picked it up only here then again difference three times zoom on the right and on the left 2.9 times zoom in terms of um, yeah problems with, with yellowish kind of color here the sony also tended to go to this yellowish kind of uh, view which is interesting so the zoom lens might be not so good yeah it's in general darker exposure but you can see here that this is bluish and this is greenerish yellowish some kind and the more realistic is the one on the left still you can see some burned out uh yeah sun was shining there so the hdr effect was not so good uh, let's check and compare here and you can see wow it is also a bit burnout but not so much as on this uh, on the iphone i would say so yeah but it's not the best in terms of details both this is here over sharpened by the iphone this is also doing a bit over sharpening you can see it at the edge here but let's take a look at the star of the show this little window with its fine details and you can see okay three times and 2.9 times a big difference in terms of zoom and i think both look good the exposure on the iphone is uh, brighter this is why it looks maybe a bit better uh, let's go to 4.4 times optical zoom on the sony xperia one mark three what we can see here is th still bluish but it is more you can see warmer again but it's also slightly bit uh, slightly bit brighter here which is interesting and when it comes to details i think the iphone one here with the three times zoom and it looks a bit of of course closer up as well this might be due to the difference in main camera sensor and then three times zoom is a bit more than the 4.4 times zoom here but yeah this is what you get and yeah, which picture do i like better when you take a look at here it's like overblown completely so very close to the to this one here but you can see the fringing 
going in and here is not sharp at all so the 4.4 times zoom on the sony is not as good as the three times zoom this is maximum zoom on the sony with which is i think 12 times and 15 times we have on the iphone a clear winner hands down the iphone i'm pretty surprised by this but the iphone looks just better this is the miles ahead you can see here I can zoom in more here um, you see the processing here going on on the iphone but still uh, when it comes to this kind of there has some this haze here on the on the sony i'm not sure why um, then again another test again take a look at the sky of the iphone much more like um, cool looking and yellowish looking which is uh, according to the sun but the sun is coming from here a bit a bit more realistic on the iphone and on the sony xperia it is a bit it is a bit cool it's too cool i would say and you can see it also here on the street this is the same thing that i told you at the first picture we can see interestingly enough that i think the the xperia looks a bit sharper than the iphone in this case but uh, it has this bluish kind of tone which is in this case wrong uh, it should be more yellowish like the iphone maybe not as yellowish as the iphone is the iphone also has better hdr again on the front you can see the shadows here are a bit darker than here a bit brighter here uh, in terms of detail level let's take a look at the sign here um, not much of a difference take a look at the car there and the car sign yeah it's like almost the same not much of a difference i have to say this is the one time and then we have ultra wide angle on both and interestingly enough the ultra wide angle of the um of the of the iphone you can see here also lets in a bit more blue and the ultra wide angle of the uh, Sony Xperia lets in a bit more yellow here. So in this case, I have to say, because you can see it's not as blue as it was before when you take a look, but not as yellow as it was before, is it? No, this one is much more bluer here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, in this case, I would say the Sony super wide angle did a better job in terms of getting the colors right, because it's a bit too yellowish now and uh, if you compare with here it's consistent this is this is good i think but the sony has now the better colors but when it comes to the dramatic sky effect here with the clouds more details definitely in the iphone uh, is it realistic what the iphone is doing probably not because the sun is shining here somewhere in the background so it has to be a bit overexposed but still um, both are good in this case um, no clear winner i would say uh, zoom in shots and this was a bit sh shocking to me the three times optical zoom on the iphone was not kicking in at this uh, light here for some reason so what you get is like a crop on the main sensor it's like super super bad oil painting like and uh, the uh, sony xperia has the right uh, free timber line zoom uh, kicking in and uh, clearly the HDR is not so good, I would say. Uh, the bluer sky here, it's more yellowish here. Um, more cooled down, more brightened up here. But in general, I think a clear winner here is the Sony Xperia. And now I can go also to the 4.4 times zoom. And I went also to the 4.4 times on the iPhone, which is a digital one. And the interesting part is here, when I did use the digital one, it just kicked in, the, uh, the lights changed somehow. It kicked in with the, um, with the zoom lens and produced a much better photo here. You can see it's a much darker, cooler tone here on the left and a much more uh, yellowish and, and then brighter on the right you can read a bit more and uh, yeah the iphone i think in this case even though the colors um, might be a bit overdone it looks uh, more pleasant to the eye um, continue with the darker conditions and continue with the issue that i had before if i go too close to a subject it, the iphone switches automatically to the macro lens and in this case you can clearly see the more pleasant photo with the better be background blur and bokeh 
is on the left with the Sony where it just keeps um, the main sensor and uses the main sensor for this. You get still this sharp, nice and sharp here. More is sharp because it went, went to the ultra wide angle for, for close-up focusing and uh, yeah. Mm. It's a bummer that you cannot turn it off on the uh, iPhone and you have to like adjust your view a little bit. When it comes to low light, uh, we see here clearly that the, there's something wrong with the, with the uh, HDR exposure on the Sony. You can see it's completely blown out here. This, this is also blown up, but not as blown as on the Sony. We have also a bit of a uh, problem with focusing because I think it was focusing here. It, it detected there was a window. Maybe it was too good in focusing and it was focusing on the window here on the glass and maybe also the reflection or something like this. Because you can see here the Hennis, uh, the little mascot from the Aster FC Köln, the football club is not really sharp when you compare it to the iPhone. So the iPhone clearly wins here. In terms of colors, however, that is, again, the iPhone is wrong. I don't know what's wrong with the colors, but every time it looks pleasant, I have to say, but it is not realistic to what I saw with my eye. And uh, yeah, next, also again, the color nighttime. For some reason, greenish, bluish here, especially here, you can see it's greenish kind of tint and here it is a yellowish light why should it be greenish around it so it it's a bit darker exposure here you can see this is written in green and here is also a completely different color of green here written and yeah it's clear who has the more accurate colors that's the sony definitely in terms of sharpness or anything else uh, not much difference a brighter exposure on the iphone that's basically everything that you can see in the dark here i was a bit shocked first of all i thought oh the sony looks a bit like over sharpening going on and nope and yeah the iphone actually is a bit sharper here i would say and maybe has a bit like the same issues maybe a bit of more sharpening here you can see the sign the p sign and here and what's written underneath it but when we go to the sign here the sun point sign and it's no advertisement i don't like this you can see it's a bit of overexposing on the iphone and uh, yeah the xperia managed to make it right also here this looks like hollow blue which is a bit weird because when you look at this yeah, it is actually this is turquoise like color that they have there mm, and not this uh, hollowish blue like color. Uh, brighter exposure and here light source both struggle. Uh, bright exposure on the iPhone and uh, yeah, maybe slightly bit too much red here. And uh, yeah, because you can see there's a red and this is like a different kind of color. The bricks have a different kind of color. It's also brownish red. And here it looks, looks almost the same, which is uh, a bit unrealistic. Uh, anything else we can say here? Yeah, that's that's basically it. Uh, we can clearly see that uh, it was night time already. The sun is going down. And when I have to pick which looks like more night time, then it's the left one and the right one Yeah, makes it a bit everything a little bit brighter than it actually was, which is interesting. Then it's super interesting shot because it's very hard to do this uh, first of all someone lost probably most of its bike uh, the other thing is like sharpness when you take a look at here we see the over sharpening of the iphone but we can also clearly see that the iphone at least has it sharp and the, the uh, sony failed to make it sharp you can see it here on the sticker and on the side here yeah it's uh, definitely the iphone uh, the color also a bit more black more contrast again to it uh, the yellow and the green a bit more punchy as well on the iPhone but when it comes to like what's what's happening <laughs> on the top here it's like this is green and this is more yeah a bluish turquoise like green yeah you can uh, three times uh, you can ask yourself which one is the right color it's more sharp on the iPhone but you can see from the from the background why is it more sharp on the iPhone because you can see there's so much sharpening going on here in the background it's almost unreal and here we can see the colors are right on the Sony <laughs> this is like simply this is how it looked like and this is also not over sharpening here it maybe managed not to 
figure out the right sharpness on the right object but the colors it nails it uh, it really nails it the sony and uh, why is it so so complicated because yeah you can see these little stones that have like uh, little patterns and a noise reduction software usually like tries to get rid of those little uh, patterns and uh, yeah, uh, in this case both I think did a good job, but yeah, clearly the, you can see the over sharpening and the sharpening in general on the iPhone is not natural sharpness. No, 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 that's uh, clearly here. Yes, this is natural sharpness combined with getting uh, a more sharp point and combined with a sharpness filter, but this is clearly uh, uh, sharpening applied on the iPhone and it's a bit overdoing it in, in certain scenarios. And here we can see it also clearly uh, nighttime photography through a window of a um, shop that sells this stamps here and what we can see first glance I think the right the iPhone looks a bit better because you don't see that you are photographing through a window and on the left it looks a bit more you're photographing through a window you can see this haze here as well it is probably a reflection of some sorts here a little bit maybe uh, anyway, difference in terms of uh, photo lengths, we have 4.4 times zoom on the left and we have 3 times zoom on the right. So we get a bit closer on the left one, but if I zoom in, you can see huh, it's not very sharp. It's the 4.4 times lens has this issue even in nighttime. You can see, okay, colors and, and uh, things here. And here, holy shit, what's going on here? It's like sharpening up and it looks like a painting it doesn't look real it's like you can see clearly that an algorithm was running over it and uh, yeah ran over it just like running running uh, over someone on the street so i rather prefer the left one where i can see at least the wood the the the, the, the things the stains on the wood and yeah the, the, it is wood and here it could be also metal <laughs> it's like it's yeah here also more details more clarity in the 4.4 even if it's not 100 sharp but there's a lot of sharpness applied on the iphone so yeah definitely clear when it comes to low light situations and sharpness the iphone has an issue with its zoom lens and the xperia wins here xperia wins in colors usually but sometimes it can get it wrong like in this case so here we have um i think I think this is uh, yeah this is also 4.4 against three times zoom and uh, both um, managed to fail here because when I zoom in you can see both agreed to having this wall here or this light greenish it was blue <laughs> it was not green it was a bluish light a cold light not a warm light that you usually have in the night what we can see clearly here is both have a lot of noise I think the iPhone, either because it's zoomed out so much, handles the noise a little bit better and there's a bit more noise on the uh, Xperia. But we can see here is like 3, pi 3 point time, uh, times zoom and 4.4 times zoom. 4.4 times zoom is not as sharp in general, but the 3 times zoom, it, this here with this, it, this is not sharpness. This is over sharpening. This is the sharpness algorithm running amok on the iPhone and making everything smooth out here and uh, sharpening applied we can see overexposure on the sony definitely cannot handle this bright light here and this is something that we can see later on but what happens with the colors here we have like this greenish kind of color of the background here and here we have a bluish kind of record and yeah again who has the more accurate colors it's the sony uh, next photo zooming in a little bit uh, maximum zoom for both and now 15 times zoom if you zoom in of course ooh, looks nice but you know does look looks like someone painted it uh, had like some algorithms running through it if you zoom in here uh, also some algorithms running through it but not very good so you can see the noise going on um, and it was also like both are not good i would say in this case but uh yeah you can clearly see more processed on the iphone than on the xperia but yeah i think the iphone made a better job here when it comes to this when it comes to this also i think the iphone made a better job first of all what we can see here is the iphone has a darker exposure in the sky so with more this is like uh, also not so realistic the sony has a bit more realistic because there was the sun was like going down there was a little bit more of this it was more greenish uh, looking than this dark bluish looking sky 
and maybe both not so realistic but what we can see here the main thing is like here we cannot read anything here on the sign because it's overblown when we read it here we can read oh it's a pizzeria so pizza capone's pasta so we can read here we can see the color difference again it's a bit more yellowish warmish on the iphone a bit more unrealistic because the color of the pizzeria is uh, at least uh, looking more into the direction what the sony captured here but you can see overblown uh, overblown highlights here as well on the signs here also a bit but you cannot read it but definitely also here at this little light source as you can see the sony uh, yeah did not work out but the cool thing about the sony is and this is the cool thing it, you have a manual mode where you can set everything you can set almost everything aperture you cannot set because it's not settable on the phone but you can set shutter speed you can set iso manually and then you can get a shot like this same situations not realistic at all but you can get a nice little shot where you can make everything a lot darker or you can make everything a little bit more cineastic looking like the oops like the car in the foreground like blurry because yeah i had a slow sh uh, slow shutter speed and then the sign wonderfully readable and i think even a bit better than on this shot of the iphone uh, everything a little not also the, the the everything a little bit more yeah flair to it a bit more darker you can try to do this on the iphone as well if it's software but you only have the exposure compensation where you can go and do, can go down and uh, one stop down this issue that I had here one stop more down would be a too dark kind of picture one stop more up ends up with this kind of picture so where the uh, everything is really sharp and detail level when we can compare here almost the same but you get a different kind of flare of the picture ne? and also the, the the car in the foreground I was waiting for another car is a bit unsharp but not as uh, you get don't get this little cool effect that you get here with the with the car like moving like this so because you cannot sh set the shutter speed manually here so yeah this is the big difference in terms of photography and uh, let's take a look at videography because i think this is also very interesting video comparison of the front-facing camera what you can see here clearly as we have a little bit of better exposure on the iphone on the right but also more yellowish exposure which is a bit of weird maybe because this wall is a bit red more red here it's a bit more overblown but it is not as red skin color and color of the rest of the surroundings here like bushes and trees they look more look more green more realistic on the sony xperia we can also clearly see the field of view is a bit more closer on the xperia than on the uh, iphone so uh, front facing camera when it comes to details this is what you can see on the xperia you can see already like noise creeping in in the background and yeah it's like it doesn't look so pleasant and here the iphone yeah it looks a bit better in terms of noise but this is because there's an algorithm running on it uh, because in terms of details i don't think it has better terms of, of, of details but it has this warmer kind of look which is too warm than it actually was there it is a bit too cold maybe as it actually was here on the sony so yeah a draw i would say when it comes to to this but clearly it looks better on the iphone uh, when you want to do vlogging or something like this but in terms of uh, um, sharpness and details i think they are mostly on par then we go to the ultra wide angle and here we can also clearly see a difference in terms of uh, colors again a bit more warmish kind of color tones on the iphone a bit more cooler and a bit more realistic on the sony same thing that we had with the photos when it comes to sharpness which is interesting i would say yeah this looks okay we can go maybe one frame here and here is a also like this is i think almost the same position you can see here is a bit more contrast a bit darker on the sony in this uh, always getting a little bit darker kind of scene but um 
yeah in terms of colors i think it's a bit too white here and the jacket is not as blue as here or greenish almost but more realistically here in terms of sharpness i think there's over sharpening going on on the sony it looks a bit like fake in terms of sharpness and here a bit more consistent with the rest of the photo what i don't like so much is the top of the photo you can see the leaves here but it looks like uh, the, 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 the correction of the lens, uh, ultra wide lens, is not as good as on the Sony where it looks straight. And here it looks a bit like stretched a bit. Uh, also on the sides here, left and right. Um, the Sony has, I think, the better ultra wide angle in terms of like getting the uh, edges right. That's definitely so. When it comes to close focusing distance, I thought I managed to make it sharp here on the uh, iPhone, but uh, yeah, if we compare it, uh, yeah, not really. In terms of colors, interesting enough, almost the same. When we take a look at the detail level here, the iPhone is not did not manage to make it sharp. There, I think I got a sharp frame, not really, also not sharp. Um, and here also didn't bother even to make it sharper on the ultra wide angle but what i noticed later on is here after i switched from this uh, very close-up shot where it didn't focus at all uh, to this shot it focused back on me here and i'm sharp as you can see here perfectly on the iphone for some reason it's yeah lost the focus completely and <laughs> wasn't sharp the rest of the video uh, which is a bit weird it didn't even catch up to me in my face again can see the rest of the video is unsharp so if you do <laughs> close-ups with your iPhone don't try to yeah uh, go back then maybe just stop and start recording again and then the main camera video also in this darker condition I think here is where the iPhone shines the main camera video looks uh, also there's more reddish more brighter color uh, I thought there might be more uh, high dynamic range in the background as the sun is there, but uh, no. In terms of sharpness, I think it managed to do it, and I think it looks natural and consistent to this, even more yellowish and more red kind of face. And here, color-wise, Sony wins for me, even if the exposure is a little bit maybe tent too dark. Let me go a step further here and bright condition what i see here is like smudging in the background the, the blur is not so good so noise is creeping in and an anti-noise filter creeping in and if i go further uh, it looks clearly to me that the left is from a smartphone because of a bit of more sharpness applied i don't know it looks um that the background doesn't look like natu as natural as it should be and on the iphone i think in terms of video yeah it nailed it a bit more but you can write down in the comment section what you think about this especially in those kind of stupid face situations can i get to super stupid face that i make here probably at one point there um yeah you write down in the comment section which one you think is better i think the colors i like more my face on the left because this is more realistic and on the right yeah nee. And it, HDR was disabled on, on the uh, on the iPhone for for, for this test uh, here. Yeah, yeah. I think the iPhone makes a better job in terms of background blur and uh, in terms of main camera video. What do you think? Write it down in the comment section. So what do you think about uh, this uh, little camera comparison? Is the iPhone really the clear winner? Uh, like it should be, like most people would say. And how does the zoom performance end up? Is the periscope zoom on the Xperia 1 Mark III better than the iPhone's uh, one time 3 x zoom lens? And how about low light? What do you think about this low light video that I'm shooting right now with Xperia 1 Mark III, full HD, 60 frames per second? Mm, is it better than the iPhones? And of course, who is the overall winner? Write it down in the comment section. This is everything for this video. Like, share and subscribe and until next time, bye.